The following is a WRHU special program. If you want talk, games, and fun all rolled into one, well, you've come to the right place. This is The Game Show, where host Bradley Clark and his special guests talk about the world of television game and competition shows. But Bradley's guests aren't here to just talk. They came to play a game as well. What will today's topic be? What game does Bradley have planned? There's only one way to find out. It's time to start the show. You heard the man. Welcome to The Game Show. And here's your host, the Bradster himself, Bradley Clark. Thank you, Austin Angelo. Welcome to The Game Show. That's right. This is the show that we talk about game shows and competition shows. Glad you can be able to join us. And today we've got a very good topic. Today we're talking Survivor. This is Survivor Game Changers. 39 days, 20 people, one Survivor. That's right. We're talking Survivor. We're going to talk twists of Survivor Game Changers. And my in-studio guest today is, we could say, a fan of Survivor along with me. This is Bernie Dentler. Hello, Bernie. Hey, Bradley. You are correct. A huge Survivor fan. Always have been. I remember watching Survivor Borneo. God, I must have been four or five years old when uh, Survivor first premiered. Been a huge fan ever since and very excited about Survivor Game Changers. Well, I'm so glad that we were able to find each other in this Survivor world. Uh, when I was in <laughs> high school, I latched on to one of my friends who was also a Survivor fan. But I was worried that in college I wouldn't have someone to talk Survivor about and you were the first person that I found <laughs> to be able to talk Survivor with. And not just, you know, some facts and that stuff, but true Survivor yeah, intelligence. True Survivor lore. You are a fellow Survivor expert, I think. Much more so than even I, which is really exciting for me because I don't meet a lot of people who know the game of Survivor better than I do, which is why it's super cool to get to talk to you about it. That's right. And we, we make up twists and what should happen and what votes should happen and what season players should be in yeah, and fake all that casts. stuff. Like, we're horrible nerds about this, guys. Yeah. Like, it's kind of embarrassing to be honest but that's why we're here see our nerdum is resulting in a radio show exactly and that's what we're here to talk about survivor game changer season 34 we're already in season 34 17 years and our first topic of the day is going to be twists of survivor game changers game changers has had i would say a few twists some of them though have been taken from previous seasons i've noticed actually a lot of the twists and that's what i want to talk about first twists that have occurred this season that have occurred in the past as well and i'm going to start with the legacy advantage which was first brought up last season in survivor millennials versus gen x and last season it was a bit of a difference from this season last season once you hit day 36 you can read what it is and then eventually we found out that it was immunity at the next tribal council to whoever had it but this season was a little different this season sierra dawn thomas who ended up getting it even though andrea technically found it Let's first talk about that. Andrea took the box off of where the envelope was, and there it sat, and Sierra just happened to be by there and snatched it up herself. Do you think that was Andrea's first bad move of the game, not noticing her surroundings? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's such an easy mistake to make. You know, you're out there. It, the game is just starting. You want to help your tribe at that point. You don't want to be the person who screws up something in terms of not getting the item that everybody needs. You know, you're trying to get the chickens, you're trying to get the food, any sort of supplies like that i think what andrea did was make a very very easy mistake i'm not sure how much of it is a critical mistake in andrea's game i guess that depends how the legacy advantage ends up being played in the end right now these players did not see millennials versus gen x so they didn't know except for zeke and michaela who knew about the legacy advantage no one else knew about this twist so i guess that would consider it new for the other players which is why they may have introduced it again but to me this isn't an advantage that i particularly was oh my god the legacy advantage is back what about you i think the legacy advantage is most interesting because it gives the ability of an exiting player to still have a little bit of an impact on the game which is a new and interesting twist i think that the most interesting application of a legacy advantage would be somebody who is in a minority alliance with maybe one or two other players getting picked off near the end of the game and then giving it to that one other person or one of the two people left in their alliance sometime around, you know, when there's six players remaining. It could be a huge advantage to somebody at that critical 
critical moment in the game when they don't really have a lot of options left. And it's going to make other people have to change up their strategies potentially at that point. There's an issue of fairness, though, as there always is with these survivor twists. That's kind of my concern with the legacy advantage is that you just sort of get handed this gift almost from the gods as, as this person, you know, gets their life extinguished in the game and they throw this lifeline back to somebody in the game. I'm not sure if it's in the spirit of what Survivor originally was, which is when you're out, you're out and you don't get a say in the game except for Redemption that, Island, yeah, which huge issues for me with the spirit of Survivor and Redemption Island. Uh, same as the outcast twist back in uh, Pearl, Pearl Islands. Islands. But speaking of when you mentioned before Survivor handing players advantages, let's talk about quote unquote Exile Island, which was not Exile Island. It was Pamper Luxury on a Boat with John Cochran. Cochran? Oh my God. I feel like this is very perilous. What are you doing here? On top of Exile being something so totally unexpected, here comes Cochran. I've met presidents, prime ministers, and I'm not very often awestruck. But to meet one of my favorite Survivor winners was an honor and a privilege. I am here as part of your exile experience. Oh my god. I'm here just to be kind of a sounding board for you. We can talk strategy, we can talk about what your game moving forward is going to be like. I think there's a value in having an objective third party to talk Oh my god, to. do I have the best exile ever? <laughs> All this time. Is pretty Nobody's going to beat it. I don't think it was necessarily fair that it was just based off of a buff draw. Do you? I don't have as much of an issue with the bad luck of the draw, or I guess in Debbie's case, the very good luck to get sent to Exile Island as, as it was this season. My bigger issue was with the way the Exile twist was presented in the end, where Debbie was given her choice of three advantages, and she was explained to exactly what these advantages were. So there's no real strategy involved in which one she was going to choose. Of course you choose the extra vote. Why wouldn't you choose the extra vote? And Bernie, before we continue on with that point, let's take a listen to the clip where Debbie on Exile Island is given the choice between the three advantages. You'll soon be joining a new tribe. Choose the advantage you think will help you the most. Just when I think things can't get any better, I get to pick from this box one of three advantages in the game. Fake hidden immunity idol kit. Everything you need to construct your own beautiful but fake hidden immunity idol. Extra vote. One extra vote may come in very handy. Tribe challenge advantage. Your new tribe will have an advantage in the next immunity challenge. Wow. This is a big decision. I'm taking the extra vote. All right. I also think that the extra vote was the one to go with because a fake idol kit, you can make a fake idol out of anything. Why do you need a kit? Of course, it probably has some great yarn and some great beads, but I don't think that's really that necessary at this stage of the game. I'd be curious to see what the idol kit looked like. Yeah. Like if it is the actual elements of the hidden immunity idols that are being used in this game and you got to string the yarn through the the hook on something i could see it being a valuable tool depending on how you used it some players have now seen what a hidden immunity idol in survivor game changers looks like so once people have seen the idol it's a lot harder to you know whittle a little stick and convince somebody that that's a hidden immunity idol so a kit that gives you actual pieces of an idol could make a very, very convincing fake. And I could see some interesting ways to use that, mainly giving it to somebody else and making them think they're safe when they're not. If I was Debbie, as much as the extra vote makes sense, I would be at least the slightest bit tempted to take that kit and go back to camp and tell Brad Culpepper that on Exile Island, she found a hidden immunity idol, but the twist was that she has to give it to somebody on her tribe. I would definitely, if I was in Debbie's shoes and I took the idol kit, I would give it to Culpepper. See, as that would be good. And I think they should have put the idol kit somewhere where it wasn't up against a better advantage. Yeah, I don't think she should have known what she was getting. Yes, it should have been a draw like in Token Sheens in Exile Island where you pick two urns. One has a clue and one doesn't. It should have been like that. Yeah, or a scenario where she didn't know exactly what they were. Each item just had a theme, like outwit, outplay, outlast. For outwit, you get the kit to make the fake hidden immunity idol. For outplay, you get the challenge advantage. And for outlast, you get that extra vote. I think that would have added a little bit more suspense to the actual scenario. I think if you know exactly what you're getting, of course you choose the extra vote. Debbie kind of wasted it. Ozzy, who she ended up using that extra vote on, would have been voted out even without right. the the extra vote. 
but it still makes the most sense to take that extra vote given the chance. Another instance in Survivor where an extra vote wasn't really necessary at the time it was played. You had season 30 with Dan playing an extra vote. That didn't matter. Season 31 with Stephen Fishback playing an extra vote. That didn't even matter. These extra vote things aren't really paying off. It's the same thing with the super idols. Every time they are in play, they never in use. I was about to say that. I think the super idol is a little bit different because I think the super idol is not of itself a deterrent to vote you out. If people know you have the so-called super idol, that's not something that can be flushed as easily. There's no way to trick you into not playing the idol. You have to actually put all of your votes or at least a majority of your votes on that person to flush the idol and then still have enough votes to take out somebody else or risk the person who has the super idol determining who's going home. The super idol is a huge advantage in the game. And over time, I've become less and less enthused about it existing at all. I'm glad that we haven't seen it so far this season. I wouldn't be surprised if it rears its ugly, powerful head, though, sometime because there's just been so many outlandish twists already that anything can happen. And speaking of idols, you had the return of the hidden immunity idols at challenges that was first used in Survivor Second Chance. And Troy Zim was the first person to get an idol at a challenge. To find an idol again, it's like, ugh, I did it. And finding this changes everything. It's life for me. It gives you the feeling of power. And power is huge in this game. What do you think about that? Well, Andrea, just like she totally overlooked that clue, was also looking right at Troyzan when he was taking that idol. I think that is the bigger mistake on Andrea's part, because Troyzan's walking around with a hidden immunity idol in the game, and so far nobody's targeting him. In terms of the larger game going on here, Troyzan is in a much better position than it looks like, because nobody's really targeting him, and he's got this idol in his pocket. So for the longer game, I think that's a bigger mistake for Andrea than passing up that legacy advantage by mistake. If she had caught Troyzan in that moment, I don't know what would have happened, but I think it would have been very, very exciting to see. I hope they keep hiding idols at challenges because I want to see somebody get caught. There was also another unique way of placing idols at camps this season, and that was by using a symbol on the water well that you have to put water on to see where the idol is hidden below. I thought that was clever. To be honest, I think that was one of the coolest idol positionings in Survivor history. Using an invisible symbol on a plank board that you need to put water on in order to be able to see it is genius. Yeah, I have a question about that, though. It got me thinking. I wonder how long it was set up like that. Hasn't it rained out there in Fiji? Like, what happened when rainwater got on that board? To be honest, I don't even remember a day that it did rain. I don't either off the top of my head. But I'm just wondering, if it did rain, would that mark have suddenly become exposed by the rain? Or was that board and that mark not placed? there until the clue was found. I would say so because this came after Troy Zan's idol was found so I think that was the first intention for the idol and then they decided we're going to do this. Right that would make sense. So I think that was the whole positioning behind it because before the season started Jeff Probst said we're going to hide idols anywhere and use any tactic with idols. It's not going to be in the same place. You're going to find them at challenges. You're going to find them at the beach. He even said you're going to find them at tribal, which, which I've been waiting is for. It's something I want to talk about because, as you know, I have a theory about the hidden immunity idol yes. at tribal council. There is an object on the podium that they go up to vote at. There's lots of objects there, lots of clutter, and I think that's interesting because it's not the neat workspace that it usually is. There's lots of little trinkets and doodads and little little things about, and I wonder if they're to distract you so that you don't notice something that's right in front of you, which is that one of these objects, I think, is a hidden immunity idol. It doesn't look like the other ones we've seen so far, but there is a box with a compass inside. And that box is open and that compass is just sitting there. And I've wondered if perhaps that compass is an idol of its own. Maybe it's just another trinket. Maybe there's something else in that room that's an idol. But I think it would be very interesting to hide immunity right in front of the faces of the people who are voting. I would want that to happen. And it should be the person who finds it has to play it at that tribal council. Because even when you find it, and even though you're so sure you're safe, you just found an idol. Oh, it's going to help throughout the rest of the game. No, that idol can only be used right then and there. I think that's what they should do. I still want the pen to be a hidden immunity idol. You hold it, you write down your name on it. There should be a, some little symbol that hints at a hidden immunity idol, and it's the pen. That's what I want to see, because everyone uses it. 
It's in plain sight. And there should be like a little message that says there's another pen somewhere around there, and that's the pen you have to replace it with. That'd be cool. I'd be very interested to see. It might look like that stick Ozzy carved. Back in fans versus favorites. Yeah, that Eliza was not fooled by at all. Exactly. But Jason was, as many Survivor fans will know. The next of this season's twists I want to talk about are the tribe swaps that occurred during the tribe portion of the game. And just like in Cambodia, this season's tribes went from two tribes to three tribes back to two tribes, which means here is another example of a twist that occurred in Survivor Second Chance, making a return in Survivor Game Changers. This is kind of becoming very predictable, I think. And especially this season, there was a few people that played on Second Chance. There's a few people that, to be honest, I think got on Game Changers because they were rejected from Second Chance. Do you think they were too early? Because this happened after the second vote. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I actually find it difficult just in my memory to keep track of the tribe swaps and beyond that to keep track of who was on what tribe because it felt like tribal dynamics never lasted more than two or three episodes this year. And I think that really hurt the games of some of the bigger players because there was this temptation right after every tribe swap, you know, take out the big threat from the other side. And I think that that was a big part of why we saw this bloodbath in the first half of the season where you saw people like Tony and and Sandra getting voted out of the game, and JT and Malcolm right out of the gate. Yeah, and I think, especially in a game called Game Changers, there should have been another twist about the way that the tribes were chosen. For you to just pick a buff, not just once, but twice when they changed the tribe, just picking a random buff, they could have did something a little more twisty, I think. I would have liked to see a schoolyard pick for Game Changers. I would have liked to see, you know, the big players pick other big players and then maybe you get a a really weak tribe that gets decimated. Yeah, and be the next Survivor Palau. Yeah, or maybe doesn't get decimated. Maybe they find redemption and they beat the big players at immunity over and over again and the big players take each other out like that. But it would be happening on the terms of those big players because they picked their team. Right, exactly. They should have had Sandra and Ozzy be captains because they are quintessential Survivor players. Of course, you have Suri, but... Ozzy in terms of the males and Sandra in terms of the females. They should have been team captains. That would have been cool. And the next twist I want to talk about is the two tribes at one tribal council twist, which occurred about midway before the merge hit, in which Jeff Probst at the end of an immunity challenge told the two losing tribes this information. All right, Nuku, Mana, I'll see you guys at tribal council tonight as one group where you will vote out one person. I thought that was probably the best twist so far this season because we've never seen it before. No one knew it was coming and it produced a big outcome. That's another one I have really mixed feelings on, to be honest. That tribal council was phenomenal. It was really, really good television. It was unique. We saw things we've never seen before with those big huddles, but at the same time, kind of super unfair to Malcolm who got completely screwed by this twist that came out of nowhere. Malcolm, who was in such a good position to that point, as he put it himself, he kind of got hit by Survivor lightning. That kind of thing happens in Survivor, but maybe I'd have different feelings about it if somebody else had gone home. Right. And the scenario might have also been different if there hadn't been tribe swaps to that point, because that gave us the whole dynamic with JT and Brad and the other tribe. I felt like this twist was kind of like the outcast twist from Pearl Islands, because it was one of those twists where no one was expecting something like this to happen and as a result a strong player was sent home just like Andrew Savage got voted out because of the outcast twist and I feel like he was one of the top players that season and that did him in in Pearl Islands the outcast twist and now of course with Malcolm who is obviously one of the favorites this kind of reminded me of the outcast twist yeah and I mean Sierra should have gone home at that point she is still in the game Totally possible that Sierra makes it to the end now, just like Lil made it to the end after the outcast twist. That's right. But Lil being at the final tribal council in Pearl Islands ultimately made Sandra win that season, and now Sandra is of legendary status in the game of Survivor. Absolutely. Queen stays queen. The queen stays queen. That's right, Sandra. The queen does stay queen. Okay, next twist is another new one for Survivor Game Changers. It is the Merge Feast twist. And here is Jeff Probst to explain its concept. Before we officially merge, you have one last decision to make as tribes. In order to enjoy this beautiful meal, one person from each tribe must volunteer 
to not take part. If we don't have two volunteers, one from each tribe, to sit out of the feast, the feast goes away, and instead, you will celebrate the merge with an individual cracker and a swig of iced tea. So in the end, who decides not to eat? Well, it's the macho Brad Culpepper from Mana and the always wanting to be nice Ty from Nuku. Do you like that twist with the merge feast? It was a non-event, to be honest. It didn't seem to come up after the fact. I don't think anybody's going to vote out Brad because, you know, Brad's got a huge target on his back. Because he everybody gave up the feast. Because he gave up the feast and now everybody thinks Brad Culpepper's so nice. No, they're going to take out Brad for other a million other reasons. He's too much of a physical threat. He's learning to make emotional relationships in this game. That's why we get rid of Brad Culpepper, not because he gave up the feast. When it comes to Ty, we're going to take out Ty because somebody finds out he has two hidden immunity idols or because he's sneaky and you can't trust Ty because he plays a really erratic game and he gets super paranoid. That's going to be why they vote out Ty, not because he gave up the feast and now he's too likable, so he's a big threat. But I'm so glad for once, especially with the reward this season, that they didn't just give it to them. There was some sort of twist with yeah, the reward. I agree. They have given these players a lot this so season. So much. This is like the Hilton they're living on. I know. Survivor. Do you remember All-Stars? They got nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I hope we see something like that again. I hope we see a bare bones season eventually. I would really like to see that as a twist in Survivor. Give these players nothing and don't have any other twists. I'd like to see a back to basic Survivor a season. A clean Survivor, maybe yeah. 16 players, two tribes, no <laughs> tribe swap until the merge. Let's see in this level of gameplay if that will work. Because when it was back to the original gameplay of Survivor, it was really all about surviving. Mm -hmm. And now surviving is an afterthought. Yeah. Five minutes into the game, you're already deciding who you're voting out first or looking for idols or making some plan. The building the shelter is basically an afterthought. Yeah, the contestants in Survivor Africa must be so mad watching this season. Yeah, that was a brutal season. And now they get all this food so that they can just talk strategy, which I guess nowadays is what people want to see because it's more drama. But let's see this style of gameplay in an original Survivor setting. That's what I would like to see. I'd like to see that too. And with that, we're going to get to my favorite feature of the game show. It's an actual game. And Bernie, you're going to play a Survivor-themed game. This is the Game of the Day. Game of the Day. And today's game is called Survivor by the Numbers. Survivor by the Numbers. And here's how it works. The game consists of three rounds, and to win, you must get a combined score of 20 points. And here's how you'll earn those points. In rounds one and two, you'll have the option of choosing one of the two unknown categories, A or B. And you'll have 45 seconds to answer up to 10 questions. Now, each correct answer earns you one point. And if by round three you haven't reached 20 points, you'll play the final chance round, which consists of 10 one-point questions. And because these questions are a bit harder, you're going to have 60 seconds in that round. Remember, you need 20 points at the end of the game to win. Are you ready? All right, let's do it. Let's play Survivor by the Numbers. Now, round one is an exact numbers round, so that means each answer given will be of numerical value. Okay. Do you want A or B? Let's go with category A. You're going to take category A. I'll name a survivor season. You tell me how many castaways made up the jury in that season. 45 seconds on the clock. And time starts after I read the first season. Okay. Survivor Micronesia. Nine. Wrong. Eight. Survivor Palau. Eight. Wrong. Seven. Survivor Nicaragua. Ten. Wrong. Nine. Survivor Cook Islands. Nine. Correct. Survivor Philippines. Nine. Wrong. Eight. Survivor Cambodia. Ten. Correct. Survivor Guatemala. Eight. Wrong. Seven. Survivor Cagayan. Ten. Wrong. Nine. Survivor Vanuatu. Nine. Wrong. Seven. Survivor Millennials versus Gen X. Ten. Correct. And that's the end of the round. You got through all ten, but you only got three correct. That means you have 17 points to go as we go into round two. And round two is a more or less round where you Ooh, must decide if I the actual number is more or less than the number given. So do you want category A or category B? Okay, let's go with category A. All right. I'll name a Survivor Castaway and how many total days that Castaway has played the game of Survivor Ooh. throughout all the seasons they have played Survivor. The number given is wrong. 
You can tell me if the actual number of days played is higher or lower. Now remember, this deals with all the seasons they've played, and none of these players are part of Game Changers, just to be fair. Okay. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock, and time will start until I finish reading the first player's name. Okay. Russell Hance, 84. Less. Wrong. More. 88. Tina Wesson, 79. More. Correct. 83. Rupert Bonham, 113. Less. Less is correct. 104. Coach Wade, 99. Less. Correct. 96. Joe Anglum, 61. Less. Correct. 56. Sue Hawk, 50. More. Correct. 54. Jerry Manthe, 92. Less. Correct. 89. Philip Shepard, 64. More. Correct, 67. Courtney Yates, 58. Less. Wrong, more, 63. Andrew Savage, 39. More. Correct, at the buzzer, 42. You got eight out of the 10, Ooh, correct. I made the right choice. You made the right choice, which means your total is 11. So I need nine more points. So that means you have to get nine out of the 10 correct. Oh gosh. On the final chance <laughs> round. Now this is an open-ended question round. Uh-oh, okay. So it could be anything. Okay. Let's play the final chance. And here's what you have to do. I'll give you a statement involving a number you must provide the correct answer for that statement. So, for example, if I were to say the 20th season, the correct answer would be Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Okay. So that's how this is going to work. Now, as I mentioned before, this question is a little more tougher, so you're going to have 60 seconds. Okay. And you have to get 9 out oh, of the 10. Oh, no. My Survivor expertise is going to be put to shame, but let's do this, Bradley. Your time won't start until I finish reading the first statement. The first runner-up in Survivor history. Um... Oh my gosh, what's her name? Um, Kelly Wigglesworth. Correct. The third season to film in Samoa. The third season to film in Samoa. Can I pass and come back to it? Sure. The oldest Survivor winner at age 57. Um, is it Tom? Wrong, Bob Crowley. The only Ooh. season to last 42 days. Africa? Wrong, the Australian Outback. Oh my god. Place fifth on Survivor Micronesia. Fifth, Micronesia. Um. 15 seconds. Eric? Correct. First castaway to be medically evacuated. Michael Scoopin? Correct, the sixth season. Oh, time is up. Those were tough. I know. Those, Those were, were tough. tough. What was the third season played in Samoa? Give me a second because I kind of want to guess this one. Okay. Um, so the first season played in Samoa was obviously Samoa. And then there was Heroes versus Villains immediately after that. Was it South Pacific? It was South Pacific. Survivor South Pacific was the third season of film in Samoa. And the other one that you didn't answer was the sixth season. And that was Survivor the Amazon. Oh, the Amazon. However, you did get 14 points. And that's pretty impressive, though. 14 out of 30. And that was your game of the day, Survivor by the Numbers. Survivor by the numbers. Well, Bernie, thank you so much for being a part of this episode of the game show Survivor Game Changers Edition. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Bradley. I know I have to brush up on my numbers-related Survivor expertise now, but if you ever do another Survivor-themed episode of the game show, I hope perhaps you'll have me back and uh, I can try my hand at my Survivor numbers knowledge once again. All right, next time you come back, I'll do another numbers-themed game. Or, or not a numbers-themed <laughs> game. I'd be fine with that, too. Wink, wink. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And of course, numbers is a big part of Survivor, so that's a good area to brush up on as well. Absolutely. It is a numbers game. Well, that wraps up this edition of The Game Show. I hope you all enjoyed this Twists of Survivor Game Changers themed episode. I'm Bradley Clark, the Bradster, telling you to tune in next time to the show where the discussions are always about game and competition shows, The Game Show. Bye-bye for now. All of the Survivor clips and sounds used during this episode of The Game Show are courtesy of the CBS Television Network. This edition of The Game Show was created and produced by Bradley Clark and was recorded at the WRHU Studios. This is Austin Angelo speaking.